Yeah, so here's Sebastian is describing the problem for kind of the... Well, first I'm, I can just say a bit about what has happened the last year in Touche. I haven't been very active uh, myself, but I think the biggest thing that has happened is we've got TL, TLS support. I'm not... I can't say that I know what's like all the small parts of it, it was I called Christian Svensson that did that and the motivation was to to get uh, glibc running opposed to usually libc and he also started out an effort to, to port that to open risk so, so that's probably the biggest thing that has happened in the tool chain otherwise it's mainly been just syncing with upstream and trying to not fall behind too much. Much. Yeah, so we have updated the bin utils and uh, GCC, so, so it's following like, mainline. And uh, I also branched out 4.8.1 to kind of have a more stable based because otherwise we're just taking some point in the in the like commit history and just bring it in and there might be like upstream breakage that comes into to our our work so that's why I, I brought it out to a separate kind of stable branch that we that we can use and uh, the idea would be to just every time there comes a new GCC release we would just jump onto that and have that as our kind of stable development branch. Uh, so that's about what has happened with tool chain this year. And uh, this is the kind of the base for discussion that I would like to start. So the problem is that our ABI for uh, variadic arguments differs from what all the big arcs do. And that causes problems because some projects have they use like non non standard ways to exploit like the way that ABI works on the most other common big architectures. So uh, and one of the one of the projects was GCC itself, actually. But that has actually been fixed in upstream now. So uh, the problem we had, we couldn't compile the native GCC uh, because of this. So, but now we can with the, with the upstream stream fix for that. So, so what, what Sebastian is suggesting is to move over to the kind of ABI that most architectures use. Well, that of course makes sense in a way that it, it's less troublesome. We're small guys and, and it's a lot harder to make, like check, does anyone do this kind of tricky stuff that isn't kind of allowed by the standard and then push patches upstream to a lot of projects than to just change, like be, be fle flexible and change ourselves. But so of course a problem in that way that we're going to change. To do that, we have to change our ABI and that will break like existing software. You have to recompile everything in your, in your software's like stack to, to, to not break your own code, kind of. Well, for us, it's not maybe a big problem. We don't have like that much libraries and stuff pre-compiled out there, so it's kind of, you, you, you would recompile your whole set of programs probably if you switch to chains or, or like upgrade it to chains, so it's perhaps not a big problem, but it's like an, it's not a nice thing to do, I think. To it's not it's also a bit against the risk philosophy of uh, letting the compiler do this stuff it uh, does best and letting the hardware do this stuff. Yeah, that's best. 
So, um, if you uh, want to uh, have past structures partially in memory, partially uh, in registers, uh, then uh, the code for ordinary functions that have structures passed this way becomes more complicated mm -hmm. and larger, slower. Um, yeah, but I, I, I understand what you mean, but I, I'm not so interested in, in that. It's more like a compatibility with like external pro or code bases, that kind of, kind of thing I'm more like. Or the motivation for this would be that, not if it's harder to do like in GCC or if it's going to make more inefficient code and stuff like that, that that's, I don't think that's our main concern with this whole thing. But, but it is quite a big trade-off. The thing is, we've got to support people who don't follow the C standards. Yeah, but yeah. But the trade-off is we're going to degrade the performance of our processor. That's quite a big trade-off you're making there. The second comment I'd make is the assumption that we're quite small, it's not a big thing. What we found when we made the change in GCC yeah. 4.5 yeah, yeah. was, you're amazed how much is out there. And don't forget that it's not just a question of recompiling source code. There is a fair amount of hand coded assembler, you know, library cores and so oh, forth. Yeah, yeah, Assume right. the ABI, and those were the things that all broke, and those are the things that are still crawling out of the woodwork mm. three years later. So, uh, it, yeah, yeah. So we have like a pro and con. I'm myself. I'm, I'm a bit split. That's why I want to have this conversation or this like discussion about it. When what would be the way forward and what would be what do we want to do with this? When you talk about hand code assembler, I suppose that would happen less frequently with uh, standard arc functions. Yeah, I don't think there so, is uh, a lot if of... If we only change the ABI for those functions, that would also be... Uh, yeah, that would be a more lightweight. I, yeah, I agree. But the, where I want to steer this discussion is uh, well, I, I see kind of three ways to do this. Just ignore it and continue what we have now. Uh, change the ABI, or actually four ways. Uh, change the ABI for just this periodic arguments. Uh, and then the really, like, on the really other side would be to, if we're gonna change the ABI, or should we change it completely? And like, there are other kind of small, stuff that could be improved in our ABI, should we change those at the same time and create a whole new ABI? And the follow-up question on that would be, uh, should we make that the only ABI or should we have like possibility to, or like, yeah, to compile, compile time like configurable shoes which ABI you would use? Well, the proposal in that letter was the fifth Thing, which was not changing the Varac stuff um, only, but also the ordinary functions. Yeah, yeah, but that would kind of be the root of changing a lot of things, like completely changing our ABI to something that. So uh, I would just like to highlight that this is different from, from what was proposed. Yeah, yeah, okay. So that's kind of the place for the discussion. Does anyone have any input? How, how much uh, code is it that doesn't follow the C standard? Uh, it's SDL or something, or it, I heard of you, a name of uh, some projects. But uh, is it really that many? Well, there might be many that we don't know about, but I think the ones that he stumbled upon would be was it direct FB and, and well, the GCC was the other one that we have found this in. Yeah, and, and GCC, they were responsive and uh, that got away. Yeah, yeah, that got away. Yeah, yeah. Have so someone tried talking to direct FB or just, we just assume that this is a huge problem and we never will never be able to solve it? Maybe it's just, it's not that big of a problem. Yeah, I don't know. yeah, maybe. I have a uh, suggestion, you could actually I mean, it's been done before in GCC, you have two different call conventions and the uh, command line flag say to, to say, uh, people, okay, we are going to do it according to standard from now on, so you have this default flag will be for the standard yeah. call API, but if you want, you still have this other flag for what you were used to before, 
It's exactly like what people using the Alpha were doing with the OSF core convention yeah. and the uh, VMS one. Yeah, so that was kind of that that one one of the ways that I tried to describe. Okay. Like it's it probably put it more better. Extensive. Hmm? That's probably even more extensive. So then your new build will have a multi lib uh, with these two ABIs, and then you've got people shipping libraries only with the old ABI, only with the new ABI. Mm. Some might ship those. And then you have to uh, worry about where can I get which version of the library. Well, I, I think that's not really a point because you would only provide the old one as a compatibility flag. You would not encourage anyone to use it for new developments. But, but if you link a program together, everything has to follow the same name. Uh, that's not the case, actually, I believe. Which is well, you, see you can annotate functions to use different APIs for some calls. You could have some sort of shim. Uh, library to do stuff together but then you, you would have to do contortions to actually do the linking do a partial link of this LVI, do a partial link of that LVI and then you use a special program <laughs> all the stuff together well yeah and that's where the concrete question of what are the software that are currently released in binary form or as assembly that use a non-standard ABI currently we, we have we have only one example, which is direct FB. I think Olaf makes the right call, which is before we go through what is a pretty major and disruptive change, it might be worth first asking direct FB would they mind fixing their non standard C code? And secondly, just checking if there's anything else that breaks it. As we know, the one product the other one other project that broke it very quickly went to write to convert it to standard C. And uh, very quickly, I wouldn't say the bug with it was actually uh, issued to the bug tracker 10 years ago. So, but when I bumped the bug, and uh, I, there was a solution uh, back then, like s suggested, or someone suggested a solution. So, what I did, I kind of updated that solution and bumped the bug. and it wasn't a very pretty solution, but I didn't have time and energy to really come up with something better. But it got the discussion going on, and after that, it pretty quickly actually got got. But the bug is ten years old, and there was no discussion of it for ten years. And the yeah, yeah, you're the right. Perception is probably gone away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. So, but yeah, just that it wasn't a newly discovered bug. It did it or like it was known. Before. But then, back then, no, nothing really happened. Yeah, I I would say we we tried to wait a bit and try to see if we can talk to Direct FB and see. Yeah, I kind of maybe agree that it would be the problem. The biggest problem is that it's really hard to detect this, like to see that a project have this problem, because it's not like when the bug manifests itself, it's pretty subtle. So, so, so it's really hard to debug it. It's time-consuming and it's hard to detect in the code base. I think. Well, if someone can come up with a good way to detect it, that would be a like another way to to solve this and well. Could have so. The compiler can tell when you've hit this problem. I mean, the, the compiler could insert Varax code that instead of changing the ABI, it uses a runtime warning or error when a potential ABI incompatibility uh, exists. Yeah. Yeah, so that's one option to explore too, that gets some kind of error shaking inside, inside the compiler. Or like guards for that so you wouldn't because it's 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 really hard to to or it's it's painful to debug the when it happens because it's it's not like evident is, is that something that will be generic or will uh, I just realized it would actually help all that much because just because you could pass something that is not right doesn't mean it happens you you actually have to take on the caller as function that passes it in a different way. Uh, yeah. It's still be done. But <coughs>
Yeah, again, different colors. Yeah. There is some static analysis I could use. Uh, but if you got past war warnings, uh, well, assume you actually have enabled warnings and heat any of them. Uh, suppose I think part of the problem is that you don't do that in the first place. Um, but yeah, you, you could potentially have different declarations and um, it looks fine at compile time and only becomes normal at link time. Well, you could still use static analysis. For mm, yeah, that's, that was actually my first thought too, to, to do some that kind of thing. But yeah, it's not a trivial, like, it, it's not trivial to use, to it, it's, but, but it's but probably some possible. Add some target specific data in the similar to function name mainly, except that you don't really need to get into this kind of stuff which makes incompatibilities. You could just have some extra elf sections describing what's going on. Like here's a function that passes uh, something as uh, ordinary parameters, and here's a function that, that looks for varax parameters, and uh, then the link that um, in um, the FDL merge private data could look for the stuff and see where does it fit. Mm -hmm. so it's possible, but it's <laughs> complex. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. But anyway, I have put this patch in a separate branch just to keep it around that it doesn't just get lost in the mailing list. So, yeah. I don't think we maybe get so much further today with this, but, or, yeah, we have got some opinions at least that it might be a bad idea to break the ABI and, and trying to, to detect it and, and uh, force patches to various projects would be a better way to go. Is it main problem? Uh, until we've done lots of projects that have yeah, the same problem. Yeah. Is the main problem actually with direct uh, calling uh, a function using the wrong prototype, or is it more with casting pointers around and, and then getting the wrong circle? Because then the linker won't find it so easily. Um, you, you could use a uh, more elaborate kind of um, function passing that guards against it, but then that wouldn't really for reproduction use it would incur an overhead, a significant overhead for every um, argument passing. To keep track of what you're passing in town. Mm. Like the room. Yeah, the, yeah. Perhaps if Julius has, have you been taking notes again, Julius? Oh no, not for this one. No, no. It's recording now, right? Yes, okay, yeah. <laughs> Might be nice just to get a summary. Perhaps, Stefan, you could summarize to the mailing list of the discussion. Then yeah, Stefan, then Sebastian knows what we've been discussing. Yeah, I can try to do that. Yeah. So, I think that's about what I had in mind to discuss if not someone else had something they would like. Well, plus, if you could formulate this in a target independent way. Uh, it's very really wrong if you uh, intermix box uh, and non box function declarations mm -hmm. this way of these kinds of tasks. Um, so maybe as a mat mat flat extension or something similar. Something for you to look at right now. But yeah, it, it doesn't make it any simpler. <laughs> Is there, is there any update on LLVM this year? Uh, not from me, but some. Every other month, are you pulling changes from from trunk? So any upstream benefits we're getting? The advantage of 
doing it in a more target independent way is that uh, the open risk community wouldn't have to do all the checking. Mm. Yeah. So then somebody else who is just who has seen them these Yeah, uh, that's one. that's a clear benefit that it would give a warning to all the projects like that are using a newer compiler that would emit that warning. That's that's a really good point. Yeah. Okay.